Uh, Ajit, always good to have you. Uh, you know, listen, you, you can help us try to figure out Musk. I'm not sure what any of us can figure it out. But one thing you might have some insight on, I know, is sort of this contention he's making about not really knowing about the numbers when it comes to bots and fake accounts on the service and how high the percentage really is. Your thoughts? Well, I think the issue he's identified is legitimate. There was a question about how many daily active users Twitter actually has, but the problem is twofold here. Number one, contractual. If you look at the merger agreement, each side, including Elon Musk, has to make, quote, reasonable best efforts to consummate the transaction. And so, as you pointed out, simply saying the transaction on hold doesn't really hold a lot of water. Moreover, Twitter, and importantly, its board, has a merger condition that allows them to go for specific performance. They can force Elon to provide the equity financing, to go for the debt financing, to consummate the transaction, if there's any hint uh, you know, that he might not otherwise do so. So contractually, I think the Twitter board uh, is on pretty solid footing here in terms of you know, moving forward. And that's part of the reason why Brett Taylor, the chairman of the board, put out that tweet on Friday afternoon, as you might have seen. We remain committed to this agreement. The very important statement for them to have to make. The larger question, I think, is what exactly is Musk getting at here? And there's been some speculation that, uh, you know, t Twitter might have made a filing that suggested the number of bots is not as large as it actually is. But here, too, there's a problem, you know, just sort of conceptually. If, if indeed there is an issue here, it's been disclosed by Twitter over a number of different filings most recently. And number two, under the merger agreement, Musk has to prove that this would actually have a material adverse effect on the company's earnings. And this is not just a question of, is there an error that we can identify? It has to have a material adverse effect. And so why is Musk doing this? Well, there's been a lot of speculation as to why that is. But uh, yeah, I think contractually, at least, uh, you know, there's a problem here that uh, you know, doesn't allow the merger to simply be put on hold. Yeah, Ajit, you, say, you don't sound like a former FCC chair. You sound like an M&A attorney. Uh, you got all your... <laughs> You're, you're on top of it. And everything you say, you know, is correct based on, obviously, my long uh, career reporting on M&A. The question, of course, will continue to be, do they take him to court? They could do so now, this board, if they wanted to. I mean, he's already, you raise this in breach, he's not using his reasonable best efforts, spending the weekend raising a lot of doubts about the very deal that he's involved in. The board doesn't seem to want to go down that road yet, but one would have to imagine this could well end up in court. I don't know what your thoughts are, though. Well, I think this is one of the issues that I've been thinking about over the weekend since I saw that tweet and the reply by the board chairman. As I mentioned in my very first interview with you a couple of weeks ago, the board has a fiduciary duty to shareholders to maximize the value of the company. And that's part of the reason why they accepted the offer by Musk at 54.20 per share. Now, of course, as you've seen, the share price is under $39. And so it could well be that Musk is essentially saying with these types of statements, look, you know, it would be great if we could reprice the deal, you know, contractually, you may be entitled to specific performance, but litigation is going to be a drawn out process. It's going to be very complicated. So you know, why don't we try to essentially renegotiate what that price should be? And that's part of the reason why the board, I think, put out that statement through its chairman on Friday to say, we remain committed to the agreement that we signed on April 25th and issued. And so I think the board has to be thinking about its options here. You know, if they indeed in, um, ultimately agree to a renegotiation of the share price lower to come a little closer to what the stock is trading at right now, that would compromise the value of the company, but it would also save time and effort in terms of litigation, which could get very yeah. messy. So it's a very tricky time for Twitter's board here. They have to be very careful in terms of their fiduciary duty, and it's a very unpredictable situation.